So, we're going to do today's video a little bit backwards. We're going to start at the end. Specifically, we're going to start at Wall's End. So Wall's End is in North Tyneside. It's not far from where I live. But if we're at Wall's End, where does the wall begin? Let's find out. Right, so I've jumped back in the van where there's not as much road traffic noise and, and whatnot. So I've got my map, the Hadrian's Wall path, but obviously we're not going along the path, we're going along the road. So I'll show you just quickly on the map. So we are at the start point there, number seven, Newcastle upon Tyne, like I say, Wall's End. And we are going to drive all the way over to just above where my thumb is here, Bowness on Solway, Bowness on Solway, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, there's a map of the UK here, the yellow line indicating the the route across. Obviously that would be the path if you were walking the, the route. People do walk the route, it's around about 80 miles. But obviously I'm in the van, we aren't going to be walking. We're going to be driving because we're lazy. I say we, it's just me, but I'm taking you with us. So I've put the destination at Google Maps. It's around about a two hour drive. So I'll see you when I get there. So as you'll be able to see behind me, there's a sign saying Walls End 84 miles. So we are now here, if you can see in the background, Bowness on Solway. We have made it over to the other side of the, the country. Like I say, 84 miles, not really that far. Um, so we're gonna have a wander, see what's around, see if we can find the actual start of the wall. Just behind me, just, um, just up here, there is a plaque with a picture of Emperor Hadrian on and it says Walls End 84 miles Good luck, go with you and I assume it says the same thing underneath <laughs> um, So yeah, so we started off in Walls End This is now Wall Start or Bonus on Solway just behind um, So that's the end of the video no, I'm only joking. Um, so we'll have a wander around and see what there is. I don't seem to do very well at these park ups. So I've got a little Simba with me. And when I first arrived here, I opened the back of the van to get the water dish for the dog to give him a drink of water because We'd, we'd been driving for a couple of hours, it's a bit warm in the van, so I just thought, you know, I'll give him a drink. And one of the, the cars that were parked here, a very helpful lady decided to let me know that you weren't allowed to stay here overnight. And brought my attention to a tiny little, not very professional looking sign. But anyway, so I, I went and had me a little wander with the dog and thought nothing of it. I've come back, I've sat in the back, I've had a cuppa, I've had some crisps, um, I've been on my phone for a little bit. And would you believe it, the same lady has come back and she just thought again to, to knock in reminders that you're not allowed to stay here. I think I'm being chased off basically, so I'm, I'm just going to move. Um, just while it's still light, I've decided I'm going to move. So I've had a look on Park for Night. There's a place called Maryport. It's it's not too far away. It's 20, 26 miles. Just have a look on my phone there. And in Maryport, there's about five or six different parking spots on Park for Night that they all say that you can park overnight, saying that they've had no bother there. So I'm sure I'll find one of the places I'll be able to find somewhere to stop. It's a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. Do you know it? I'd rather just move now and have a, a peaceful night. I still need to cook my food and everything rather than have some little busybody keep knocking on the door. So, time to move again, which is a shame because the view is lovely. So I've just parked up very quickly on the side of the road. Um, it's quiet road, so there's no one no one about. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up very well. Uh, I've zoomed it in as much as I can. Just the, the mountains in the background look absolutely amazing. 
I'm a, a city city folk. We're not used to it, you know? We're not used to the great outdoors, the wilderness and whatever else you want to call it. But like I say, it looks absolutely amazing. So I think I will have to come up here with Laura sometime. Maybe go exploring. But anyway, onward we go. Right, so I've just got to the park up here at Maryport. It's out of the way and more importantly, there's another couple of camper vans. So it looks as though I'll be okay. If anyone's watching and got any tips for finding park ups where I won't get moved on overnight, give us a shout, let us know. Either in the comments or if you click on uh, our channel name, the email address to contact us is in there as well. Do you know if you go on our channel and then click on the description, we've got an email address in there. Yeah, just like I say, if you've got any, any tips or anything, just, just let us know, cause I'm rubbish at it. But yeah, anyway, so, it is 10 to 9 at night. I've just had the, the dog out for a quick wee. I'm in the back. I need to get the bed set up. Excuse the mess. I've got everything piled in. I'm going to put my window covers at the back. It's really, really cold. So I think I'll be getting the diesel heater on as well. I don't know whether to set the bed up first or cook my food first. I was going to have bangers, mash and beans. But I've got a backup supply of hot dogs in there as well. I've got some finger buns. I was going to put the the bangers in there and scoop some mush on and dip it in the beans. I might just have hot dogs instead, so can't be bothered to cook the sausages if I'm honest. The mash is just instant mush. But I'll get the get the window covers up. I'll get the cooker out from, from underneath. Get the hot dogs warmed up and I'll see you in a second. At this point I struggle on with the old fashioned tin opener trying to get the hot dog tin open before giving myself a brine shower. Obviously because it doesn't want to just help us out, does it? Oh, there I'm covered in brine. Jump in. I think I'll tip that out in the pan. It's just behind the, the camera. Bear with me. Simba's just jumped up all excited thinking he's getting hot dogs. No you're not, unlucky. <laughs> you can enjoy your delicious dog food. <laughs> I'll be honest, there's probably more nutritional value in the dog food than there is in the hot dogs. Right, so. I'm in. Get the hot dogs on and then enjoy a feast fit for a king. Hot dogs and finger buns with ketchup. Right, so that's uh, the hot dogs cooking away. Um, for anyone who's worried that I might die, I might poison myself with, with cooking indoors with the door shut. I've got the, the vent above extracting, I've got the front windows behind the curtains open and then I've got a carbon monoxide alarm so hopefully I won't die. If I die you won't see the video, if you see the video I didn't die. Can you absolutely believe the cheek of it? Hot dog buns from Little, they're not even sliced. I'm gonna have to slice them myself. Absolutely shocking. Right, so um, a little update on the, the Little hot dog buns. So I sliced them, sliced it open down the middle, and then that's when I realised it was already sliced. So I apologise to Little on behalf of my stupid self. So look at that, sliced perfect. Don't need this. Somebody else to wash up now though. All right, so I got my first hot dog. I took a bite, obviously, before I got to press record because I'm just a greedy pig. So I'm gonna enjoy these, the the hot dogs in comparison to the buns, the tiny, so I'm having to put two two uh, hot dogs into the bun, you know. First world problems, it's a hard life. The only thing could do with some, some onions, some mustard, but you know, I am slumming it in the back of a van. I spend the next half an hour or so just chilling out, eating my hot dogs, and also texting Laura because I left for bonus before Laura finished work, so I didn't see her today. Right, so I've got the bed set up. I'm on a, a bit of a, a slant, so I'm sleeping the other way since Laura's not here. I'm, I'm able to do this time. Obviously, she wouldn't let us the last time, would she? So she'd rather we had an uncomfortable night's sleep, but I'm here tonight in the bed by myself. So I'll sleep how I want. <laughs> to you, Laura. <laughs> Had a bit of a, a nightmare setting the, the bed up though. 
there's just there's not much room in this little van i think i should have designed like a, a longer bed and a pull out we've got like a a diner style table and chairs where you you take the table out and put a board in and it becomes a, like a little double bed where we sleep sideways tell me it's the dogs coming up come on in Simba. come on is he gonna come come on in come on you can make it there you go he's got a cone of shame on <laughs> anyway yeah so um you might hear the diesel heater kick in i've just turned that on because it's getting a bit chilly so yeah um the bed like i say it's the the diner style two seats one on either side with the table in the middle the table comes out there board goes in the middle it makes a double bed but I wish I'd built like a longer bed across the back and a slide up bed because it's an absolute nightmare setting this bed up. Um, I stood on the, the dog's water dish. Sent that fly in, sent the water fly in, covered everything. So had to mop all of that up. Use all of my toilet roll. So oh, I'm just moving. Yeah, I had to use all of the toilet roll to, mo to mop it up. So and then I have noticed as well, I think my leisure batteries might be on their way out i've had them about two years now they're the sealed lead acid batteries but on the energy charger it's got the voltage display on it and it had um it was like 12.8 12.9 volts on it before when i put just i've got one strip light on over on the, the other side bear in mind that the the low wattage led lights that dropped it down to 12.5 and then i've just turned the the diesel heater on and it's dropped down to 12.3 so and it's got like little bars over saying like how how full they are it's shown as like 75 percent full um it, it just has increments in 25 percent so but i got told for the sealed lead acid you can only use up to 50 percent so i can't use much more basically i'd love to have the the lithium iron phosphate batteries but haven't got the money simple as that i mean if any of the, the companies are watching this you know and they want to sponsor a video give us some freebies um go for it you know like fogstar eco worthy i've got one of your panels on the roof um renergy i've got one of your panels on the roof yeah go on send us a battery <laughs> well two batteries if you don't mind <laughs> i don't want to be greedy but you know i've got two two 100 amp hour batteries under there so i uh, you know i'd love to take them both out the lead ones and, and drop lithium iron phosphate ones in one day you know who knows i might have the money to buy them but probably not so i'll just i'll see how far we can get with the the lead acid batteries like i say i'm just keeping an eye on it. it's still 12.3 so i just want to try and take the chill off in the van and then i'll turn it off and hopefully because i mean it's it's 10 o'clock at night now so hopefully it'll not be on much longer anyway so i'm gonna make a cup of tea and uh i've got films downloaded on my ipad but i don't know if i want to watch them or not if i'm just gonna go to go to sleep and have an early night we'll see what happens i might come back to you tonight if not i'll see you tomorrow morning Good morning so i've just got up not long ago it's quarter to eight in the morning um i suddenly realized when i got here last night i didn't check for any like parking signs um i know it said it was free on park for night but i didn't check to see like if i need to be out by like eight in the morning or, or whatever so i'm gonna have to get up and get out and and have a have a little wander around see make sure i don't need to pay for any parking um i've just chucked yesterday's clothes back on because it's a bit chilly as well obviously the the sun's out so it's starting to charge the panels up again so i'll put the heat on but I thought I'm not going to put the heater on just to then go outside. I'll wait until I get back and then at least I can warm it up properly. So yeah, I'm going to have a quick walk with the dog. Have a look, make sure there's no parking signs or anything. And then hopefully it'll all be good. Come back and have some breakfast. Good news, no parking restrictions. 
I might go back to sleep because I'm absolutely shattered. So, <laughs> I'll see you when I wake up again. Well, I've just woke up for a second time. I really needed that extra sleep. However, time's ticking. It's getting near 10 o'clock. So, I need to get up, get a cuppa, um, get something to eat. And then I need to get sorted because uh, obviously I've got a two hour drive ahead to get home. So, but yeah, time to get up and get a cuppa. Right, so that's the breakfast all done. I've washed the dishes and stuff. I've I've set me a little, a little kitchen area up down here. The sausages I was meant to have for tea last night, I've had them for my breakfast instead, so I've not had the porridge and saved that for a different day. It's not like it's gonna go off, it's dried instant porridge. Just need to get myself sorted really and uh, get everything put into its place and get away home. But that in itself is a bit of an issue. Um, <clears throat> Busy car park, sorry. Um, I was saying to Laura, like last night when I was texting her, I think we're gonna have to change the way the van is, at least the kitchen. Obviously we've got the unit here. I never finished building the kitchen, by the way. Um, and it stops kind of a couple of couple of foot away from from where the, the door is. I don't know, you can probably see it a little, little bit better there. We need more storage, basically. So, I don't know when, I'll get around to doing it, but I want to build like a L-shaped one so that goes kind of from the door here around and up to the bed. Um, the power outlets that I've put on the side, I'll just drill holes on the other side and I'll put them out the front instead, so it's not really a massive issue. But I was saying, instead of trying to build drawers, because I built that drawer, but it's a little bit rubbish, if I'm honest. I mean, it says it's purpose, but it's rubbish and it's heavy because it's made of thick OSB. Um, I might build shelves, put a little bit of um, like dowel rail on the front and then get some of the Kallax cubes from Ikea and then just slot them in um, so the cube will stop them, um, sorry, the rail will stop them falling out but then as you want to get it out you just kind of lift it up and over the rail and like I said to Laura, hopefully that'll, that'll give us a lot more storage area um, you know like trying to get the cooker out from under the under the table, uh, under the seat rather. I mean, if we get a full length bench, I'll be able to fix a cooker onto, onto the bench. I ordered another one actually, so it's due to be delivered either tomorrow or Saturday. So the cooker I've ordered, it's a twin hob with a full down lid. While it runs on the, the butane on the Camping Gas bottles, what I've got now currently, um, crucially, you can change the, the jets on them to make it work on propane and LPG. In the future, I'd like to get one of the refillable gas bottles. Do you know the ones where you can just go to the parallel forecourt and fill it up with the LPG autogas? Having that option in the future, you know, it, it, it gives savings, or potential savings, once you've used a few. Um, I mean, we'd need to use the van a lot more first. But the camping gas bottles, they're like 50 quid for a, a refill, you know, so... The refillable gas bottles, they're, they're about 200 quid and then it's like about 6 quid or something to fill them, 6, 7, 8 quid, even if it's a tenner, you know, it's it's still going to be massive savings, So plus a bigger bottles, you know, so you can fit more gas in them, but anyway, like I say, I'm going to get myself sorted, get everything put away and head home. So just thought I'd leave Maryport with a quick shot of around, I don't know, if it's the bay or what. <clears throat> um, I really no idea, but like I say, absolutely lovely and especially with the mountains over there again in the background, I absolutely love scenery like that. So, I'd love to go to Alaska and see the mountains over there, especially with them uh, snow peaked and whatnot, but I don't think that'll ever happen in reality, sadly. Too poor for that. Turn that way so the sun's not shining on the camera, it's shining on my eyes, that's why I'm squinting. But yeah, anyway, from Maryport, thanks for watching. Bye for now.